Welcome to Live from the Grand Teton Music Festival from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Each summer, the Grand Teton Music Festival takes place in the Teton Mountains of Wyoming. Led by Maestro Donald Runnicles, the renowned festival orchestra consists of the world's finest players from more than 90 orchestras around the world. I'm Jeff Counts, general manager of the festival, and I'd like to introduce you to my friend and co-host, music director Donald Runnicles. Thank you, Jeff. It's always good to be with you. On this episode, Donald, we have one work, the Fifth Symphony of Dmitry Shostakovich. This symphony is a giant, but we feel that, given the ongoing war in Ukraine, we would like to start with a piece by Ukrainian composer Miroslav Skorik, the melody in A minor. This short piece, with its haunting melody, has become the unofficial hymn of peace in Ukraine, and it has been used often to convey the struggle that the Ukrainian people face. Indeed, when we programmed the Fifth Symphony of Shostakovich, we felt it was important at the time to make a statement about Ukraine, didn't we? Yes. Our listeners can imagine these programs are planned often years in advance, and with the programming of the epic Fifth Symphony of Dmitry Shostakovich, We couldn't possibly know how events would overtake us. Given world events, it was very important to show solidarity, and in this case, of course, solidarity with Ukraine amongst our many fantastic artists at the Grand Tito Music Festival is Marta Krechkovsky. She is a Ukrainian-Canadian violinist. Her music has taken her from the Czech. Republic to Canada, to Toronto, and now to one of the great American orchestras, the Pittsburgh Symphony. She's been with us many years and is a glorious human being, a glorious violinist. We felt it was appropriate that she preface the Shostakovich, which, of course, as we know, has a great deal to do with struggle inherent in writing any work in Russia at that time. We also feature this hymn for Ukraine. We made the decision to add this piece rather than cancel the symphony, partly because of what you said before, the air of protest in Shostakovich's music seemed fitting in that moment as well. But can you describe what it felt like in context to do this piece with Marta in front of the audience? I recall the reaction being not just solemn and respectful, but very positive. It is an experience that I likely will never forget. It was deeply emotional it's a piece for solo violin and string orchestra I marvel that Marta had such composure she has family members who are in Ukraine who may be indeed fighting to stand up with our orchestra and to play this was incredibly moving I know the orchestra was more than thrilled these are one Russian work, one Ukrainian work they're both in their own way a voice of protest I certainly sense with the audience uh, just uh, a deep affinity with this remarkable young woman and the power of music. Well, let's hear it. Here is the melody in A minor by Miroslav Skorik. The Grand Teton Festival Orchestra is joined by our very own Marta Kretschkowski. Thank you. 
An unofficial anthem for an invaded, beleaguered, but resolute people. That was the Melody in A Minor by Mirosav Skorik, the Grand Teton Music Festival with Donald Runnicles, featuring our very own Marta Krichkovsky. You're listening to Live from the Grand Teton Music Festival. I'm Donald Runnicles. And I'm Jeff Counts. Donald, if Skorik's melody has become a symbol of resistance to tyranny, then the same can be said, perhaps, of Dmitry Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony, a work which came on the heels of very clear threats by Joseph Stalin to Shostakovich's artistic career, and indeed, possibly even his life. Yes, uh, after the first performance, the composer, Dmitry Shostakovich, found himself delighted with the review of this new Fifth Symphony. He said, and I quote, among the reviews which often analyzed the work in thorough detail, one that particularly delighted me stated that the Fifth Symphony was a Soviet artist's no-nonsense response to fair criticism, unquote. I think that's a tagline that in some way has always accompanied the Fifth Symphony, this Soviet artist's response to fair criticism. What remains fascinating is in music you can convey such passion and such emotion without revealing your political alignment, so to speak. What Joseph Stalin perhaps heard in that work served his purposes, but what the composer Dmitry Shostakovich might have been seeking to do, even as he knew this was existential for him, he was on Stalin's hit list, so to speak, following his opera, The Lady Macbeth of Mazhensk, and the Fourth Symphony it is regarded as outrageous music. This is noise, this is not music. Shostakovich lived under this daily threat of being like so many of his comrades, so many fellow artists, painters, musicians, writers, in today's jargon being disappeared because of Stalin's distaste with regard to his music. And the Fourth Symphony, we know he pulled back, it wasn't performed. Well, now what is he going to write? I very much sense that this isn't at all about what Stalin thought it was. There's a depth, there's such tragedy in this music. And this tragedy is the tragedy of the Soviet people. This is not just an individual's, so to speak, autobiographical response to his sense of terror, but also on behalf of the Soviet people. The first bars of this work, they're Beethovenian. You sense the lineage from the Ninth Symphony, the Beethoven Ninth, to this. These are themes that are hewn out of granite. And there is already such a sense of struggle, a feeling of a David and Goliath, the David being the individual artist. As we progress through this fascinating symphony, yes, there are, as ever, glimpses of happiness. There is joy there. There's ebullience. But when you listen, for instance, to the scherzo, clearly a very strong influence on Shostakovich was Gustav Mahler. And one has this slightly demonic feeling with the solo violin and the same sense of dancing with the devil the same feeling of this music is sardonic it's sarcastic in some ways it's thumbing its nose the music at whatever the composer deemed this existential threat you have the tragedy of the third movement and then you have this finale, which I would say is almost unique in the symphonic repertoire in how divergent the views are about was this indeed an answer to fair criticism or was this bombastic, shrill, and on some level this hollow joy, this celebration at the end, was this the Tsar is dead, long live the Tsar, this feeling of this is what Stalin wanted to hear, this is what... Shostakovich knew Stalin wanted to hear, but there's no celebration in this. This is the skeletal grin on this music's face. As brilliant and as exciting as the end of that work is, where an audience leaps to its feet, an orchestra feels that sense of journey and the sense of arriving at the end of journey, so that feeling that the whole thing will then start all over again. It's ephemeral, this sense of victory. Victory for whom? Victory over what? And I think, once again, there is no greater Zeitzeuger, there is no greater witness to history than the symphonies of Dmitry Shostakovich, where you have the feeling of 
his entire life and the life of his country and his comrades is documented from Symphony Number no. 1 to Symphony Number no. 15. Let's put in context the fair criticism that he was responding to in the Pravda article that scared him so much in a review of Lady Macbeth. It called what he wrote muddle instead of music, and it accused him of replacing pleasing sounds with quacks, hoots, pants, and gasps. That's the criticism he was responding to. So through the quote-unquote simplified language of the Fifth Symphony, he was able to win back favor with Stalin. But I have a theory I want to run by you, Donald, and it's not my own. It's something that has been proposed by others. The reaction of the audience to this symphony was so strong, so positive, so uproarious, that even if Stalin were able to parse some of the coded messages that many believe were in this music, he wasn't able to react to it because there was no way he could have an opinion different than what the audience had in that moment because the response to the fair criticism was at least according to the audience, exactly what Stalin was asking for. So whether or not Solomon Volkov in testimony or some of the other disputed theories about what Shostakovich was actually saying, whether or not those things are true, Stalin was in a position where he couldn't respond to them because the audience, the audience forgave Shostakovich. Do you think I'm right about that? Yes, I think that's very well put. I don't think Stalin was in a position in that, yes, that response, that overwhelming response from the audience and from that moment onwards throughout decades of that work being performed and whether Bernstein is taking it to the Far East or takes it to Russia where in the presence of the composer himself. Or does it too fast. <laughs> or does it too fast, and that's another subject. But the work has become something emblematic for an artist's struggle with his or her role in his or her art. I think that what... Stalin most certainly could not have thought or even imagined was that his own demise was in some ways being celebrated by that work. I don't put it past Shostakovich. There's the power of music. You can't point at the music and say, you see, this is where he was not being Stalinistic. That indeed, he didn't know when, he didn't know how, but what he was celebrating was a post-Stalinist world. When it was first performed, of at that stage, one was still in the middle of what was this reign of terror. There is a wonderful quote from a fellow Scot, a Hugh MacDonald, I know this was in a program note for the Fifth Symphony, where he talked about the fact that the language of music, I'm quoting, the language of music remains forever inscrutable. And I think that is what gives this music such power. After the Fifth Symphony, of course, this wasn't some happy ending. Then you have the Sixth, then you have the Seventh. Of course, the Leningrad Symphony, where this existential crisis was that of Leningrad, was that of the utter destruction and the brutality in the Second World War and the eventual end of that brutal siege. And then you move on to the Eighth Symphony and then you move on to Stalin once again at the end of the war seeking some work of great jubilation and instead he gives the world this whimsical, cheeky, almost light-hearted Ninth Symphony, which cannot possibly have been what the dictator was wanting. And yet, the inscrutability of that music, he couldn't point his finger. And then, of course, you move to the Tenth Symphony, where finally we experience the expose of the war machine, the terror that was Stalin. And this was only possible because Stalin had just died. His music remains so important and so moving. It's this tribute to one man and his hope over all hopes that one day he and his country will be free of such terror. I do think the piece has a lot of relevance today because if we are indeed living through a second Stalin in Russia, which I believe to be the case, then the messages in this piece, whether intended or not, are worth repeating in the current context. Let's hear it now, the Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 5. Donald Runnicles takes the podium with the Grand Teton Music Festival Orchestra in Walk Festival Hall in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. <laughs>
terror, hope, both? It's for you to decide. You've just heard the Shostakovich Fifth Symphony in performance at Walk Festival Hall. Donald Runnicles led the Grand Teton Music Festival Orchestra. This has been a presentation of the Grand Teton Music Festival, located in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Live from the Grand Teton Music Festival is a co-production of the Grand Teton Music Festival and Classic Digital Syndications. Victor Munzer is our producer. Our recording engineer is Vic Munzer and Kevin Harbison. As ever, we would love to hear from you. Write to us or simply send us an email to listener at gtmf.org. And by all means, come and visit us in the summer in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. For information about the festival, visit gtmf.org or you can also look for us on our recording label, Reference Recordings. I am Donald Ranicles. And I'm Jeff Counts. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.